This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan. With your host, Bradley Summers. And get the latest from Alpena Community College with ACC President Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Bradley Summers, and this morning I have a very special guest, my friend, Michelle Bailey from the Sunrise Center. Hi, Michelle. Hello, Bradley. Thank you for having me well, today. Thank you for always being here. Um, you know, and I know in the, the short time you've been in your position, um, there's been a, a lot of talk about the Sunrise Mission in the community and what it's doing, and definitely with your leadership, it's much more visible, um, which is a Good. great thing. Yes. <laughs> Um, it is. You know, and with that, that visibility of services and understanding what you're doing, because I know you're doing a lot of the education in the community, talking with service clubs, making presentations, going around, um, is the uptick of your services. And I know right now you are at an all-time high with individuals taking advantage of your services, correct? Exactly, and especially families and children particularly. Um, so we have an all-time high number of children in residence with us, and it fluctuates. We've had uh, upwards of 18 children in residence with us at a time since uh, March. Um, and so we have uh, beautiful individual children that are uh, just amazing, and they range in age from three months uh, many toddlers. We Right now we have a band of toddlers uh, that love to play with one another, which is really fun to watch and listen to them laugh and carry on. Um, we also have uh, the majority of our children are early elementary ages, mm -hmm. and then we also have some teenagers. Uh, and so it is really uh, like a huge family. Yeah. Yeah, and with, uh, with the influx of uh, children's resources, um, obviously there are some needs that come with this as well. Oh, absolutely. Everything from diapers and formula to pack and plays to also, you know, summer's coming. School is out. We always make sure that the children that are in residence with us that are school age are enrolled in school and are active uh, and get them the resources that they need to excel individually. Um, and uh, so now summer's coming and all of a sudden it's been hitting me that, you know, these children are going to have a lot of time on their hands and they need uh, inspiration. They need to be nurtured and they need to be discovering and uh, getting dirty and looking at bugs and you know all of the fun stuff and so I'm really excited about some of the things that we're rolling out for the summer as well as uh, there's been a lot of um, community support in offering a number of different summer camp programs like the Boys and Girls mm -hmm. Club as well as you know other agencies and even churches that have a number of things going on for the summer and have welcomed our children and so there's a lot of opportunity for them. Yeah, and you know, we were talking right before the show too that, you know, individuals that are in the shelter um, and a lot that you are seeing aren't the ones that have, you know, maybe a, a really scattered past of like bad decisions. These are people that are really falling into hard times that are looking for, you know, a, a way to try to meet and make ends meet and to, you know, find sustainable sustenance in their lives, right? So what we're able to offer families, um, and many of them, you're right, they haven't uh, done anything necessarily made a bad choice they're doing everything right where maybe it's a single mom that has worked a steady job or two at a time um, and sometimes we do have fathers that come in as well and they're doing it all right but they're just not being able to make ends meet at the end of the day um, between buying formula and diapers as mm -hmm. we've mentioned before to car repairs to you know uh, food and the cost of groceries clothing but especially the number one cause of homelessness in in the country is lack of affordable housing mm -hmm. and so you know that is a big factor uh, and so, you know, we have families that come in, sometimes uh, the majority of them are single moms with a tribe, you know, of children <laughs> with them. 
um, and they've tried everything from living in their vehicles uh, to save money. Uh, they've tried living in tents, sheds, garages, uh, floating, uh, you know, uh, from relative's house to relative's house. Um, and it's really hard on the kids. And so we're able to offer them a place to get on their feet where they can save the money that they're making uh, and they can um, take advantage of the resources that we offer them as far as medical, yeah. <clears throat> going to the dentist for the kids, <laughs> um, you know, uh, counseling services if they need that, clothing, food, shelter. It is really incredible what we get to do on a, ba a daily basis. Yeah, that's incredible that, you know, the, the resources go above and beyond just the, the food and the clothing, but actually helping with the medical um, resources are really important, making sure that kids have their shots, making sure that, you know, they're doing things the right way too, so that you know, they stay up to date for the school system and everything else that they need those things yes. for. You know, and we, we focus a lot on the on the kids too, um, but you know, the, the adults that are coming in as well have, have a lot of resources that are needed. And you were saying one really big thing uh, for donations that you could potentially be looking for would be mattresses. Yes, now the mattresses are specialized, so they're not your average residential or hotel mattresses. They are for more dormitory style environments and they're very specific to our building and our needs. But yes, everything from, um, we have a specific need for mattresses, pillows, bedding, uh, towels, you name it, we, we are exploding at the seams and I can say we are running at full capacity um, with primarily uh, families and children. Yeah, time after time, you know, when I, I talk to a lot of guests on the show, you know, that's a that's a really big need in this community is affordable housing. Yes. And it seems to be a huge crutch it and is. an obstacle, you know, that something I, I see the community is creating a lot of different task for task forces and, and creating resources and groups to really look into these things. But you know, at the end of the day it's we need more houses. We, we need do. more apartments. We need more of all of these resources so that individuals who are doing the right thing to try to make ends meet and, and receive the, the vital and crucial resources that you're providing, you know, can have that next step into that affordable housing so that they can really move forward. Absolutely. And you know it's interesting because uh, a lot of my travels I'm researching as well um, and there are uh, communities developers have uh, created low-income housing communities and as an expectation uh, you know the uh, residents are expected to keep their lawns to keep their to actually contribute in that little community uh, by rotating, changing the trash and whatever, and they take such pride. I, I would really like to see that type of low income housing. Uh, and we definitely need a lot more of it. There's not nearly enough to go around. Yeah, well, you know, working in the community, I know there's some really good people out there that have, you know, areas that would make really good places for these. And, you know, hopefully as you continue to educate the community on the need of what is going sure. on and, you know, the needs that you have at your organization that we see some, some people step up and we hope that, you know, the grants are there to help make these things happen because that is a very vital resource for this community. If we want to see Alpena continue to grow and to pro progress in the way that we want to, we need to support the people at the fundamental level. Right, and it's not just for, you know, Sunrise Mission guests that are residents. There are a number of families and uh, individuals in the community, especially families with children, that are just barely making it by a thread. Yeah. And, you know, um, Sometimes they have to make decisions as far as, you know, we'll, we'll eat peanut butter and jelly for two weeks so that we can pay our utilities or our rent. Um, and they're making really hard choices. I have seen, you know, families have to choose between paying for medications and housing. Um, there's just a lot of sacrifices that they do try to make. So hopefully, uh, you know, as, as the community continues to develop, we will see more of these resources. Well, Michelle, you know, I wish you all the best and the most luck with finding these resources. I know you will because I know your personality and your attitude and you're just a wonderful Thank person you. to engage with. And, you know, I, I, wish, I wish you all the best. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're looking for volunteers as well. So please, if you would like to volunteer, please uh, contact Sunrise Mission. Thank you so much for being on Thank the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Stay tuned after the break for Don Labar from the... Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest is Don Labar from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. Hi, Don. Hey, how's it going? Good. So previously, I've had you on yeah. the show uh, working with the library. Yep. Um, you were one of the historians there. Mm -hmm. You helped with our, the archival systems and a lot of the history of Alpena. Um, and now you've transitioned over to the Michigan National uh, Michigan Department of Natural Resources, partnering with NOAA. Yep. To do some of the same same sort of functions with uh, as a historian now. Yeah, absolutely. It's a brand new position. Um, it was just made. Uh, and I just started a couple days ago. So I'm very new to the position, um, but it's really exciting because I get to bring the knowledge and experiences I've, I've gained by being part of the library and I get to apply it into this um, new role. And a lot of people on the DNR side are really excited because this area has kind of a bit of a history mm -hmm. of being overlooked in terms of historical interpretation for sites and such. Um, and so it's really awesome to kind of bring my passion for the history and my local knowledge and be able to add it in a, at a state and federal level as well. So not only helping out with the Great Lakes Maritime Heritage Center, but also with the Talos Point Lighthouse uh, State Park as well. Yeah, so your, your main focus is at the, at the Talos State? So my main focus, um, I work and I'm stationed out of the Great Lakes Maritime Heritage okay. Center or the NOAA building as we locally call it. Um, and I work very, very closely with the NOAA team and the NOAA National Marine Sanctuary Foundation and their educators. Um, but I also manage, as a site historian, I manage uh, Taos Point Lighthouse in terms of its interpretations. Uh, they just went through a, a major half a million dollar renovation, mm -hmm. which was beautifully done. Um, and so I got to go see that, which was amazing. Um, and I get to help them with kind of judging up some of their interpretive panels, their heritage trails, things like that as well. Wow. So yeah. you're really going to have more of a, a hands-on approach actually outside getting yeah. a lot of really great things done then. Yeah. I haven't sat down for two days. <laughs> so like <laughs> it's very different than the previous job, but, um, but in an amazing way. And absolutely, I get to be hands-on. I get to be working with the communities. Um, I'm taking a much more heavy role into that interpretive side that community outreach side than I was able to before. Um, so it's a really amazing and uh, career opportunity yeah. and, and personal growth as well. So yeah, and I get to keep the connections I made um, and grown through the library days, um, get to keep those and we get to access the library and work in a partnership that we've been doing for, for years, keep that partnership growing and kind of celebrate what we have at the library, but also you know use it at a higher level that we can. Yeah, because being a historian, I mean, that's, uh, that's not easy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of, yeah, you know, everyone has the stories, everyone wants to see it uh, kind of in different ways. And so a big part of my job is, is balancing the different parties and how they want to work with things, how, what they want um, showcased. Um, you know, there's always a hunger for new stories and keeping spaces like the Great Lakes Maritime Heritage Center or Towers Point Lighthouse, keeping those stories relevant, making sure that when someone, whether it's a student or adult or senior coming into a space, seeing stories that they can reflect with and they can kind of jibe with and go, okay, I see myself in the story and they can kind of understand the why, what's so important about yeah. that. So it's a very, it's an amazing challenge to have um, and it's super cool to work with that. Yeah, and your commute to work now will be by boat, so. I know, I've cool. had a couple people notice that. <laughs> I live really close to the Blair Street Pier, so my wife's joked with me that I should just get the sup board and like <laughs> paddle to work, which is definitely gonna happen one of these days. Once the water's a little warmer, I'll try it. Yeah, boy, that'd be a heck of a paddle ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about a mile or so, but we can do it. Yeah, and so with, uh, and this being a new position with NOAA, mm -hmm. um, what, what brought about the position at NOAA? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, there's been some restructurings within the Department of Natural Resources and specifically the Michigan History Center. Um, I work with Toby Vogt, who's the um, director of the museum. She's amazing at what she does, fantastic. She came from the Detroit Historical Society. She helped with the renovation in the early 2010s with the Dawson Great Lakes Museum down there in Detroit on Belle Isle. Um, so she's very intimate with the knowledge of, and of interpretive spaces with Great Lakes Maritime History. Um, and so with some transitions in uh, state staff at the NOAA Center, um, we had this kind of amazing opportunity to go, okay, well, we still want a state presence up in the, in Alpena. We think it's important, you know, what kind of position can we create? And so this position was created and it works out because the historians, I'm one of several historians throughout the state. A lot of them are based in Lansing, but there's some that are based 
Um, there's one that reports out of um, Hartwick Pines, out of Gaylord area. And there's uh, one up in the UP. So there's kind of a, several of the satellite entities that exist in different spaces. Um, and so that kind of all kind of came together through conversations with Jeff Gray, the superintendent, uh, and Sandra Clark, who's the director for mm -hmm. the Michigan History Center. And they created the position to, to help advance what they're doing, especially with, you know, the um, Great Lakes Maritime Her Heritage Center is kind of hitting a big anniversary. So they wanted to really bring that state voice and that experience and knowledge into the conversation more and more. Yeah, and I can't think of a better person to fill to fill that role, <laughs> yeah. honestly. You know, you're a very active person, you love the outdoors, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I notice a lot of like, you know, wonderful things that you and Ann are always running around doing outside, and to be able to, you know, like I was saying earlier, just to be able to have that more hands-on approach, to be able to do things, um, you know, nothing, nothing against the time at the library, obviously, yeah. but this actually gets you into the out into the woods and yeah. really gets you at the lighthouse and really you know prioritizes and focuses you know the need for the, the natural history and the mm -hmm. history of our areas and then you know to bring those resources as you were saying you know f uh, from your from the past to bring them to the forefront now it's pretty incredible yeah and it's a it's a real privilege to be able to take that and I think from my previous and my time at the library it's really set me up hopefully for success with the new position but um, you know, right as I was leaving um, to jump into this position, I was talking to a DNR uh, field officer and I happened to go, hey, before I, you know, transition to this new job, have you ever seen this before? And it's all these insurance maps about Rockport. And he's like, I've never seen these before. And it tells this amazing story about Rockport. So already he's excited. So it's, it's great to kind of bring that um, because I'm part of, you know, I'm the Michi Michigan History Center at NOAA. I get to work with the Department of Natural Resources. We all get to kind of talk more. And so having be able to share a voice like mine into that group is really rewarding because they just don't know it's up here. Yeah. So being able to connect them with the resources in this area and the amazing stories is a real privilege to be able to do that. Well, I'm really excited to see where your passion and compassion for our area and understanding of our area and the ability to educate others. I'm really excited to see where that's going to bring your position and bring more attention to Northeastern Michigan and all the other resources around us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for yeah. being here and yeah, good luck. Yeah, thank Thank you so much. Good luck. Um, thank you all for joining us as we continue to uh, learn about the world of nonprofits. If you have a story that you would like to share or have upcoming events, please contact WBKB to schedule a time on the show. Thank you and have a, have a wonderful Sunday. Good morning. I am Jay Walter Wright, Director of Public Information and Marketing for Alpena Community College, and this is the ACC portion of Talk of the Town. Uh, our regular viewers will know that I'm filling in for Dr. McMaster. He's out uh, on some much deserved vacation time right now. Uh, my guest today is Dr. Paige Gorgier. Did I say that right? Close enough, yes. Close enough. <laughs> uh, Paige is our new Vice President for Instruction for the college, been uh, at ACC for nearly a year now and has had uh, a number of experiences. Um, and one of those experiences that we'd like to talk to you today is uh, about is um, an event for the public uh, that will feature um, author Angeline Boulay. And uh, the college is bringing her uh, to Alpena uh, for an opportunity to talk about her two books and also to talk about um, her history as a Native American and uh, her experiences in Michigan. She is a, a Michigan author. So uh, welcome, Paige. Thank you. It's nice to have you here. Right. Yeah, we're very excited to have Angeline come. Um, she's from Sugar Island, mm -hmm. and she bases her books from that area, so it's very nice. The college right now is trying to provides more campus events and community events mm -hmm. and to bring in some different, um, I guess, experiences for our students and things where we have, you know, this is great to have one of the, you know, really outstanding um, Native American author, mm -hmm. which, you know, is really great for obviously Michigan and just to bring in different perspectives and some diversity mm -hmm. to our students. Mm -hmm. And Angeline is a great example, particularly because she's so close. She grew up on Sugar Island. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, Anishinaabe, so she's a member of the Sioux Tribe of Chippewa Indians. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people from Alpena, you know, it'll be, f when you read her books, it's fun because, you know, the stories are based, you know, 
they go to the hockey arena in the Sioux and, you know, they're taking the ferry on Sugar Island. Mm -hmm. And it really brings, you know, a sense of community and her experiences, mm -hmm. um, which I think will be something people really relate to and with our Northern Michigan, you know, connections. Yep. I've heard that LSSU was mentioned in her books. Is that true? Right. Actually, one of our professors at Lake Superior State, one of the professors there, he was she he helped Angeline get some contacts with the state police hmm. for detail in her first book Firekeeper's Daughter mm -hmm. it's based in early 2000s where the casinos had a lot of money a lot mm -hmm. of activity but there was also a lot of um, you know meth activity mm -hmm. and so the professor at Lake State got her in contact with the state police who helped her you know learn you know, about how to set up a meth lab and all the details and things. So oh, it was kind of an interesting <laughs> connection to the college and things because it's like the college helped her get the information on the criminal aspect of the book. So mm -hmm. that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she is a very well-known author, um, a New York Times best-selling author. Uh, I think Firekeeper's Daughter was number one on the New York Times bestseller list for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the format of our event and let people know when it is. Uh, first of all, it's uh, coming up quickly, uh, Monday, June 24th. Uh, so that's three weeks or so, a little more than three weeks from right now as we're taping right. the show. Um, it will be held on the Yelpina campus um, in Van Laer Hall. Uh, we have a wonderful new uh, facility in Van Laer Hall uh, called the Fitzpatrick Lecture Hall, uh, which will seat 55 people and has the latest electronic equipment. Uh, and uh, just so everybody knows that she will be joining us uh, at the event uh, via teleconferencing. So she'll be up on a big screen, but it'll be live and she'll be able to interact with everybody. Um, we uh, plan the event to be about 45 minutes of her discussion uh, about her books and her experiences, uh, and then we'll uh, have a question and answer period after that. So uh, I'm sure it'll be very fun and interactive, and, um, and will help us feature uh, the Fitzpatrick Lecture Hall, which we're very mm -hmm. proud about. And the books, too, um, although she won't physically be there, you will have the opportunity, if you want, to order books when mm -hmm. you attend. And I'm doing my, the two books yep. are The yep. Firekeeper's Daughter, which was the first one that came out in 21. Yep. And that's the one that won all the awards immediately and was, you know, recognized as a very strong book for Native American writers and authors. And then the second one that came out in the last year is Warrior Girl um, Unearthed. And it's also a really great thriller book in it. What's another interesting thing about Angeline's book is she brings in, um, you know, the Native American issues. The and in, in, so in the second book, one of the the main characters is actually committing crimes and going to museums to recover artifacts and things from their culture and things. So it's, they are fun books too if you get a chance to read them, you know, either before or after the event. That would be a good thing as well. And I think I've read that uh, one of the main protagonists uh, is a hockey player. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, when I was in Sault Ste. Marie, I played hockey at the, the same arena they're talking about, and I thought it was great. I'm reading it going, all right, you know, we got hockey's involved, so hockey, northern Michigan, <laughs> you right. know, it's just perfect, so it's a good fit. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. Um, so uh, let me just repeat once more uh, for the people at home, uh, Monday, uh, June 24th, I don't think I said what time it is, it's at 6 p.m., in the Fitzpatrick Lecture Hall in Van Laer Hall. Mm -hmm. So uh, there'll be more promotion about that soon. Yes. This is brand new, it's just breaking right now. Uh, so Paige, we have about a minute, a minute mm -hmm. and a half to go. Um, would you like to share any of your uh, experiences in the past year uh, with ACC or, or maybe what's exciting going on at the college right now? Yeah, I've had a great first year, but I think um, a couple exciting things this summer, obviously our speaker coming in. Um, we do have the Corrections Academy, so if you are interested in jobs working in local jails, that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We also have a youth um, academy for Michigan State Police is running it, and it's for high school up to, I think, about 21-year-olds mm -hmm. for spend a week on campus and get 
police training. Mm -hmm. And so that'll be happening uh, in June as well. And there's still time to sign up for those things. So Great. And they can contact Rob Mills? Rob Mills and Criminal Justice is yeah. our contact for both of those. Yeah. So those are really exciting events as well. So if you see police cars at ACC campus <laughs> in the next couple of weeks, please don't panic. They're there. Part of classes. <laughs> for classes. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, Paige, that's all of our time. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate your uh, willingness to uh, respond quickly when I uh, come begging. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. And thank you for joining me. Uh, once again, I am Jay Walter Wright, Director of Public Information and Marketing for Alpena Community College, and this is Talk of the Town. This has been Talk of the Town with your host Bradley Summers and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at WBKB11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Queen Bee's Knees LLC production, a Morgan Murphy Media Company. All rights reserved.